please, mate. Look, let Leave me alone. Just let us London, 4 a.m. The police have been called to a stabbing, but the victim won't let them touch him. I've got one in the neck. I've got one in the lower rib cage on my right hand side. Do not touch me. Take up the cuffs and I'll do you as well. The Metropolitan Police Service receives over 6,000 emergency calls a day. But in recent years, they've faced a barrage of criticism. Now it seems to be a job few people want. I don't want your help. Well, an ambulance is going to come I and want going to, to see you, you nailed against the wall. So who is joining? And how is the Met going to produce a new breed of officer to police? Nobody can get away from the amount of criticism we've had over the last two or three years. The inquiry into the death of Stephen Lawrence, allegations of corruption, allegations of sexism, racism, incompetence. We need to address that. Commander Richard Cullen is in charge of the Metropolitan Police Training School in Hendon, North London. It's up to him to try to change the way the Met trains its police officers. Today, a new intake of recruits is arriving to begin the four-month training course. In the last couple of weeks, I've had a few doubts whether I'm actually going to be able to do it, whether I'm actually going to be able to pass. Um, I'm just sort of doubting my own ability, really. Um, but now I'm actually here, I do feel, I just feel a hell of a lot more confident and I'm raring to go now. Wow. It's a lot bigger than I expect. If 24-year-old Claire Keating makes it through the course, in just 18 weeks' time, she'll be policing the streets of London. Take care. All right. Don't worry about it, all right? <laughs> I'll be fine. OK. You're all right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for bringing me. Day one is when their discipline starts. And I'm a disciplinarian, basically. But also a cuddly teddy bear. Sergeant Dave Burgum will be one of Claire's instructors. Welcome, Sam. You're in the A class. OK. Good evening. Hello. Welcome to Hendon. Sergeant Bergen. Hello. How are you? You are? Sam Wickingdon. Can you uh, lose the earrings when yeah. you come down? They are a professional service, and first impressions do count. You go in there and then the table. To maintain their current numbers, the Met needs 180 new recruits every five weeks. <laughs> I'm Claire Keaton. Claire. Today, only 93 are joining. It's fine, no traffic. Okay. Looking forward to it? Yeah, really nervous though. Oh, yeah. No, you don't need to be nervous. <laughs> no, you don't need to worry again. about. The Met draws its recruits from all over the country. Until last week, 23 year old Craig Jones was working at a leisure centre in Manchester. I'm proud to have got this far. It's a big achievement. My parents are really proud. And now I am here. It's all sinking in and you can forget home in a way because this is going to be my new home now for the next six months, so it's time to get on with things. When they turn up, not smart, straight away that puts my back up. Um, we've had one that has come in. Um, I've taken, probably wrongly, a dislike. I've, um, because he came in, he was chewing gum, he was unshaven. He was wearing a jean jacket, uh, he had trainers on that were undone. Not the sort of um, thing that you would expect of a, a person who started a new job for the Metropolitan Police. When I've got here, I've already had my first telling off. It's like not being suited up and chewing gum. So it's like I explained, so I've just travelled halfway across the country. But you get over these things, don't you? Move on. It's me, I want to stay me. A lot of people have said to me before I came, you're going to change. Next thing, you'll have a crew cut and clean shaven. And I said, if, if you've got to do, you've got to do. But at the end of the day, I want to be playing old me the way everyone loves me. Hope. Course! 
Commander Richard Cullen has been in charge at Hendon for two years. I was sent here by the Commissioner to sort out training in the Metropolitan Police. For some time it had been seen as, as failing the organisation. We actually need super cops. The Metropolitan Police demands the best. One incompetent, one inept police officer does more damage on the streets of London than anything else. There is no room here for anybody who's a racist, who's sexist, who's homophobic, or who's a bully. If any of those apply to you, best thing for you to do now is go over to your rooms, pack your bags, and walk out through the main gates. To actually say, I don't accept the stereotyping of Metropolitan Police Officers, and to join the police service at this moment of time, takes a massive uh, amount of faith. To be a police officer, you've got to really want to be a police officer, and you've got to almost have it in your blood, if you like. I know there's not... I can't change people's image on my own, but if I can change just one person's image of the police, then I'll be really happy. Johnny Bravo loves it. Thanks very much, guys. He's a natural. Chemistry graduate Mike Walsh is from Lancashire. But never mind. I think my generation, we, we just we don't have the bigotry that generations before had. I don't think we do. I think it's getting less and less. But that's yeah. what she just asked yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just saying. It's very unfortunate that you do get one or two situations that are blown out of proportion by the press. But I believe it's up to somebody like myself to go out there and say, well, actually, you know, not everyone's like that. I'm actually not a bad lad, you know. I don't have beliefs like that. I'm, I'm here to work for you, so... Um, you know, take me as I am. The Home Office say that within 10 years, the Met must be recruiting 30% of its officers from ethnic minorities. In this intake, they've only managed to recruit 7%. Joining has been a big step for Harinda Bobra. Anybody coming from an Asian background will know every mother and father wants their son either to be a doctor, a lawyer, a solicitor. The last thing they want their son or daughter to be is a police officer. The, the, the reason only being because of the, 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 the vast dangers that are exposed to this job and the racial abuse that they would come across. But I was once to join the police. It's an excellent job and it's one of the best jobs I think to personally to be in. You've got to be strong, you know, and if you can take that sort of, you know, if someone came up to me and said, you know, blah, 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 whatever about my colour, to me, to me personally, it, it just won't, it just won't, it just won't bother me. It's an early start for the new recruits. Breakfast is at 6:45, but not all of them have made it to the canteen. It's been a rough night. Woke up about half two, then again at half three. Started looking at uh, my statement of common purpose and values. That's what they say you have to know. So. A shower. Um, what time is it now? No, I'll be too late if I have a shower. Two of Craig's instructors are PCs George Marshall and Steve Savile. All right, okay. Class. Yeah, right, sit yourselves down. Craig, can you uh, sit outside, please? Right. Mm -hmm. What am I speaking to you? Any ideas? What did I say? It was all lined up outside the wall yesterday, outside the staff room. What did I say about shaving? I think you had to be clean shaven. Clean shaven? What is that? I was under the impression if you were growing something, you were. No, what I said was. You can't have stubble, you either clean shave or full beard. OK? Right. It they need to fit way. into the organisation and to do the things that we want them to. They need to think differently about things because you can't stand and look and walk away. You have to be the people, if a bomb's gone off, that's running towards the bomb while everybody else is running away. So they're going to change massively. You will get this amount of work over the next 18 weeks. You will collect them on a weekly basis and that is what you've got to learn over the next 18 weeks. You're looking forward to that lot, aren't you? Yeah. Even when I've seen it six times now, I still find it hard to believe that they actually get through all that. Still, we have to know it. <laughs> Nightmare. Thank you. 
OK, the, what we're going to do now is introductions. We're all... We don't know each other, you know us X amount. We're now going to introduce ourselves. You're all going to squirm, perhaps. You're now centre of attention, and as a police officer, you will be the centre of attention. Morning, all. My name's Craig Jones, as well as it sounds, Manchester born and bred. <laughs> <laughs> I went to school, I went to college, done really well. When I was 16, I was arrested by the police for underage driving. I was so frightened of police at the time. I thought they were all evil people. You had to be a certain sort of person to join the police room, get out and conquer the world, that sort of attitude. When they arrested me, they took me to the police station. They almost, they almost made the experience quite enjoyable for me, <laughs> which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but, but that experience really made my mind up for me to join the police. You've asked too many questions yeah, so far. Okay. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> How did you cope with things like sort of death and abuse and RTAs and things like that? I mean, as a, you know, I'm just thinking about myself, you know, in, in four months I might be out on the street seeing stuff like that. I mean, how did you cope with it when you first started? You become very hard to it very quickly. After a few years, you will not be the same people that you are. For instance, Saturday and Friday nights, at the moment, mean, mean to you weekends off, go out with your mates, have a few beers, and let's enjoy ourselves. Friday and Saturday nights, to me, now mean alcohol, prisoners in the cell, blood and fighting, and vomit. That's what it means to me, because I've been doing this for so long. This is perhaps what I think I've been, I've been quite lucky um, in my upbringing. Um, I've had a good education, I went to a good school. I went around the world for a couple of years. Um, and I think I've learned a fair bit in that time that I was travelling about myself and about people. Um, and it's, it's a very good way, it's a good career in that you can... I'll be able to give something back of the things that I've learned and the things that I've experienced. Yeah, some very strong personalities in there. Yeah. It's not a shame through already. I was particularly impressed with... Uh, Michael, the guy with the tan who's been to Egypt, so he was quite confident, which is good, but we shall see. Hopefully he will be very confident and will be able to do it, but it's unusual to have someone so confident. I've got reservations about, about Michael, I must admit. He's overconfident. It's all fresh in our mind now, isn't it? I've seen lots of people fail the course. University graduates are no exception. Stereotyping is an important issue for the Met and one of the recruits' first lessons is on this topic. The class has been given six different cars to examine, and they have to try and work out the type of person who owns each car. It's going to be a youngish lad, isn't it? So that one, they've been abroad. Yeah, travel. You've got, you got, you got a box of wine. It's in the wine club Sunday time, so it's not reading the sun or mirror. Is it? Right, we'll go for the mail. Yeah, but I tried this. But it's the thing, he's got a box of wine, he's got a yeah, box of car goodies. Stereotypically, a woman wouldn't carry that, would she? I don't know. You don't see many guys carrying umbrellas either, do you? Well, he's been to the races, hasn't he, you can tell. You've been a bit I'm egotistic. Saying, look at <laughs> we're, we're, looking at, we're looking at the goods, aren't we? You've got a good taste in paper and wine. What age, do you reckon? Yeah, it's an older person. Yeah, older definitely. Person. Yeah, 30 yeah. plus. A mother and son tag team <laughs> unit. The class draw some interesting conclusions about a silver metro. And all cars are sporting at test. Tell me about it. We thought it was a female that, female. Dro that drove the car in because the seat was so far up, sort of closer to the steering wheel. <coughs> Someone <coughs> young. Somebody young? Someone below 25. Under 25? <laughs> oh, right. uh, Clean. Yeah. Um, and, a, and a nodding dog we saw in the, uh, yeah. on the back nodding parcel shelf. Dog. Interesting to know, actually. That a uh, young couple, under 25, catering, female, youngish, like that, it's mine. Yes, it is. When I, when I left my old division at Chingford, where I used to work, they bought me a, a leaving present, and one of it was a nodding dog. Oh. When we're in class early on, early days, we are looking constantly around the class. Thank you for that, I think we can tell quite quickly whether or not someone has come to Hendon and has put a mask up, for instance, racism, whether they're homophobic, things like that. If you just did lessons on, say, drink driving or criminal damage, some of the basic stuff we do, uh, you could hide behind a mask. With these other lessons we do, it's very, very difficult to hide behind that mask all the time. <laughs> and be the same person. Obviously, you're going to have to change in certain ways. 
But I didn't think I'd have to change like, physically in appearance. I thought I always looked quite smart. But rules are rules, so... Off it's had to go. Today is a big day. The recruits are going to try on their police uniforms for the first time. This is what it's all about. That is one for you. Change room number one, please, quick okay. as you can. Right. This thing doesn't look like Mr. Plod like that. I just can't believe I got it finally. It seems to have taken forever. I actually feel like a police officer now. It's all quite masculine, though, the uniform, I think. It's a bit of a shame, but never mind. Got to put this lad on. It sort of bestows a sense of responsibility on you straight away, just looking at yourself. You know, you're looking at a, you're looking at a police officer. I don't know, it's sort of, you put the gear on, I'm no longer just Mike Walsh. It's like you're now a Mike Walsh, a police officer. It's a bit different, really. Yeah, I'm going to have to get used to it. Right. I'm going to tell you all about the Met Fest in one go, and then I'm going to fit you individually. As soon as you're fitted, get straight into your own clothes. This is the Met Vest. It's anti-stab and it's ballistic, OK? Up to exactly what it says here, OK? If it is loose on you and you get shot or stabbed, it won't work as efficiently. It has to lie next to you. They ignore the fact that you've got boobs. It has to lie next to you. Your stomach is hit. If you get shot here, this is the slowest, most painful way to die. All right, you will die because there's not this little piece of metal in you because your, ex your entry hole's that big, yeah? The exit hole's this big, and that's what you want to stop. This is why you wear it close to you. It's not, you know, this is for real girls. When there are people out there that want to get you, this is for your own benefit. You must wear this piece of kit. Is this something we wear every day on just general duty, or would this be if we're going somewhere to a right or to a match? I get or... used to wearing it all of the time. Some police stations, because they've had about eight murders, you're not allowed to leave the nick unless you've got it on. OK, how are you feeling? Not really, all right, yeah. Need to be agile. Scary. Yeah. It brings it all to life, I think. It brings it all to reality. But it takes a lot more than a new uniform to impress Sergeant Bergham. This afternoon, I came into this room and it was in a state of disarray. There was books, pens and everything thrown out all over the place. Now, you've been spoken to by staff about classroom tidiness. It may be a small point to you, but it isn't to me. I am full standards and I ensure that those standards are met. So when I walk round, have you shaved today? Uh, no, st no, sir. Why? Um, there was no warm water this morning. Rubbish. I cycled in and I showered in cold water. Tomorrow morning you'll be outside my door right after parade and I will inspect you, OK? Sorry. If I have occasion to come in here and speak about... Where have you been? Sorry, we didn't realise we had to be back at quarter two. Right, you're on early turn tomorrow morning, both of you. Right. Can you ensure that that uh, name's taken? Thanks. You haven't got your mums and dads to wipe your noses now. You've got to stand on your own two feet and ensure that you get the jobs done. Do I make myself clear? Right. OK, yeah. Have a word, sir. Should be told. So that's what we've been doing. So that we'll yeah. Can I show this on here, please? And start bleeding them. Look at the. the, the I mean, yeah, how could you? How could you possibly, after all you've been through, not shave this morning? <laughs> like, what were you thinking of? It was too cold. You can go and sit there all day. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you come and get my kettle like Craig did? He's not as green as he looks. Cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> Being on early turn means the recruits will have to get up an hour earlier, but that's the least of their problems. Every Friday, they'll have to sit a written exam. Tomorrow is their first. Hi. How are you? I got into trouble today. <laughs> I've got to do an early turn. I've got to be inspected at 7 o'clock in the morning. The last thing I want is to fail my first exam. So I'm determined not to. It's, it seems we're going OK. I mean, I've done about 70 pages in the last half an hour. 
They're going to be tested on an information pack that was sent out to them with their joining papers. Harinder's finding it hard going. Sunday, I didn't get any sleep. Monday night, I didn't get any sleep. Tuesday night, I maybe got an hour. And then last night, I got a couple of, a couple of hours. The last time I sat exam was were, were a good four and a half, five years ago. Um, normally, I'm, I'm good at sort of like putting information together, but it's just a matter of making it stick up there. The following morning, before the exam, the three recruits on early turn report for inspection by drill instructor Peter Clements. Shan! Think what you're doing. Does he wash? Yes, staff. What are you here for? Uh, not shaving, staff. I think discipline is very important, and all the all the rules, however insignificant they might seem, which yeah, okay, my, I, I probably think some of them are quite pointless, but that doesn't matter. They could tell us to uh, have green hair every day of the week. It wouldn't matter what they were telling us to do. It's the fact that they're telling us to do something, and you've got to be able to follow orders. Mike's commitment is soon put to the test. Once the exams finish, the class have their first lesson in drill. Right, turn. Ball and left. Quick, barge. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. It's Peter Clement's job to make sure they're up to scratch for their passing out parade. When the students pass out from here on Friday week 18, they'll probably never ever march again in their entire life, but they can go away with some great satisfaction of what they have achieved. Right. And help. I was trying and then he, he said that I wasn't up to scratch so I don't it would have been useful if he could at least have said what I was doing wrong because I haven't got a bloody clue now it's my hair probably yeah maybe it's a shirt anything else <laughs> you know, I don't think I'll be marching around the streets of London but if I can get the course work done and the concept pass my keys to me that's that's the main thing of walking out of here Later the same day, the exam results are back. This is Bob Rock, 80% pass. This is Davies, 90%. The pass mark is 70%. 80% pass. This is Keating, 75% pass. This is Walsh, 100%. Well done. A lot of people would say, oh, that's brilliant, he's got 100%. Yeah, I wouldn't take that away from him. He's got 100%, but you're talking about they've had possibly two or three months to, to study this material. Now they're going to get to be in a situation where they'll only have a week to study the material. You're right, mate. You're wrong, mate. <laughs> it's not always the people that get 100% that are going to turn out the best recruits. Sure. Thanks very much, guys. Recruits have to learn to conform to the Met standards, but as one of a new breed, these recruits must also be prepared to challenge the behaviour of fellow officers. I'm going to set up an exercise where I'm going to send one of the class down to do some photocopying. Volunteer, excellent. Could you go down and take five copies of that? And while that person is away at the photocopy, I will brief the class. When she comes back, I'm going to give you a scenario and I'm going to pick on Jackie to give her views to me. Can all of you do it naturally, go against what she says. And at the end of the little discussion we're going to have, I'll then ask her what she thinks. Now, I've run this lesson before, and only one person has ever stuck to their guns. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, that's all right. Right, Jackie, there was a complaint that went in by someone that works with the cars. They call them garage hands. And they walked past the gents' locker room, which was on the same floor, came in, and made a complaint that he could see topless women on the inside of this male PC's locker. Jackie, if the complaint was made, what do you think should be done about it? Um, probably ask not to put it on anymore or to remove uh, the pictures that are already on there. So that would offend you if you saw it? Yeah, I think so. You think so? OK. Mike? Nobody's forcing you to look at it as his own property, so if you don't like it, then look the other way. It's not a problem. And after the make making the complaint, I think it's ridiculous, to be honest. If the guy wants to have a few dirty pictures, then let him have some pictures, you know? It sounds a bit petty to try and you know, get someone to take it off. I mean, they obviously put it there because they wanted it now. Do you think that's all right? Yeah. yeah. I think you kind of expect it. 
if um, Guy's locker said it, so I can't see what the problem is. It's a male looker room, so why the hell are they looking in there in the first place? OK, so we think it's petty. Yeah. So this person actually moaning about it, yeah? Jackie, what do you reckon? I think that if it causes offence to even just... Actually, personally, I don't think it really offends me. That's probably right. wrong what I said to start it. Would you still stick to your guns or would you change it slightly or...? Um. <laughs> yeah, probably I'd say it's OK, yeah. It's OK. Thank you. Excellent. Right. What actually happened there, Jackie, is I told everybody to disagree with you. <laughs> did you did you start to feel that? Yeah. <laughs> but if it was something more serious, how would you feel? What happens the day you're out with your colleague and you stop a police officer off duty who's been drink driving and the colleague you're with, he or she, decides that, no, we want to let this person go. Really good officer, been in 25 years. You're now at the side of the road arguing with your colleague. So what are you going to do? It's not going to be easy at all, because it's, it's going to be a police officer. Um, you peer pressure again. They're saying, no, no, we're not going to do it. It's, it's going to be immensely difficult, but you've got to. In my opinion, that police officer isn't a good police officer if they're drinking and driving. It doesn't matter what else you've done. You've done a thousand. The job, the, the service itself, will back them up 100% if they have a complaint. The difficulty will be alienating themselves and making them not very popular. You must adhere to. And the long and the short of it is, if you do not challenge inappropriate behaviour when you encounter it, your job could ultimately be on the line. They do feel different, it's the end of their second week. And this morning, for the first time, the class are allowed to parade in uniform. Oh, yeah. I feel good today. 100%. Let's give it some. <laughs> Each of these recruits, when they go on the streets of London, is going to have a massive individual responsibility. We're not training people to work in a supermarket. We're training people who are going to have to make life decisions. They're going to have far more power than the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for the Army, the Air Force and the Navy in peacetime. They have a responsibility which no other person in society has. And that is a heavy weight on any young person's shoulder. They say the first two weeks are the easiest, and when it gets onto the third week of the work, it's harder. I think they're, they're breaking us in gently at the moment. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm so pleased I'm here now. I'm so pleased I finally did it. Okay.